Lowell Baldwin has arrived. Sha la la la. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Allie, and this is the YNR chat vlog for Sunday, August 17th. And Lowell Baldwin is the guy that played Stephen Keaton on Family Ties, right? That's so cool, man. Like, I was actually wondering why on earth YNR would spend the money to get an actor like that, because I recognized him right away, and I was like, why? Did they spend the money to get an actor like that just to play the role of the priest? So, wow, this is really, really cool, I think. Um, actually, for your viewing pleasure, I'm going to post the link to the Family Ties uh, opening theme song just for a little nostalgia kick there. It's like the worst theme song to ever, like, on the, in the face of history. It's so, like, 70s and mellow, and it was perfect for the wedding. Um, I've, in, in fact, I think that guy is just absolutely perfect for the role. He looks like Michael. I can, I can totally see it, and I'm really excited about this guy. Um, and I just wanted to say a quick thank you to you guys for not spoiling for me, because I know you guys probably knew, like, two days ago when I was griping about, um, when is Lowell gonna get here, and you guys, um, didn't spoil it for me, because you know I don't like that. So I appreciate that a ton, because it was a good surprise. I wasn't expecting that at all, like, seeing Gloria's face, I was, I was looking at Gloria like, what is her problem? She had this, like, horrible look on her face, and I'm like, why is she being weird? And then, what do you know? It was Lowell. That's cool. I'm actually um, glad that the storyline is finally here and excited to see where they're going to take it. Um, but let's back up because I want to talk about, like, the bachelorette party because that was so fun. In fact, um, I'm really excited that Jana and Kevin finally are getting married. They've put off the date for so long. Um, and Jana's bachelorette party was just so fun and funny. Kevin as the fortune teller stripper was so hilarious. I mean, that's probably, I would have to say, the funnest that we've had on YNR in a little while. Um, maybe since, like, that love line scene between Daniel and Amber, that was pretty cool, too. But, um, the, the, oh, the stripper was so, so funny. Um, and we also had, um, I guess prior to that, uh, prior to all of the girls getting together at Amber's house, we had the karaoke at Indigo, which I also thought was really fun. Um, and kind of on a side note, I thought one of you guys told me that the girl who plays Colleen is a professional singer. Um, and if so, it's so funny because she was trying to be really bad at the karaoke, but, um, yeah, Colleen and Daniel, their little karaoke kick, um, it was kind of funny, I have to say. I personally like Colleen and Daniel better as friends, so I'm glad that they decided to stay that way. Um, so that makes me happy. Um, and by the way, isn't it kind of cliche that they had an Asian guy running the karaoke machine? I was like, there's no, I've never seen an Asian person in Genoa City since, like, Jack's wife. That was probably the last Asian character that we actually even had until they're needing somebody to run the karaoke machine. So I'm like, that's kind of just weird and cliche. I mean, come on. Um, but it was a cute scene. And um, after the bachelorette party, I thought it was kind of nice to see Lauren go home and give a little smoochy smoochy to Michael because he needs it. He's so stressed out these days. And um, I like Michael and Lauren as a couple quite a lot. So I was happy to see those two get some time alone. Um, okay, the wedding. Um, how interesting. You know, I... I just want, I just keep thinking to myself, who would have thought that Kevin the Pyro and Jana the murderer with a brain tumor would have someday become, you know, a couple and have found love and that we would actually enjoy it. I enjoyed it anyway. I think that they're kind of, I mean, they're not your average couple. They add a little bit something different. So I kind of like them together. I was, I was kind of thrown off when, she, when Jana came back onto the show at first and they did that whole stupid brain tumor thing, but whatever. It's kind of fun now. And I like the Kevin, Jana, Amber, Daniel foursome. So that's kind of funny. 
But um, anyway, like, you know, my point is my how things have changed. Um, but yeah, the Eastern theme for the wedding was fun. That crazy hippie camp. Um, I loved it. I loved Gloria walking in in her uh, leather bag that I'm sure was fake and um, in her high heel shoes and she had on like her suit and she was very stiff. <laughs> Gloria's hilarious. She's just hilarious. I really enjoyed that scene. Um, but you know, those special brownies really helped to lighten everyone up so that was nice you know i i'm pretty sure i could see colleen really extra special eyeing those brownies because do you guys remember like when the character of colleen first came onto the show <laughs> she was smoking pot in like her bedroom and she had become this little pothead and i have to say that is one of my favorite storylines of all time colleen the pothead so i was i was really wondering if colleen had her eyes on the brownies um um, Amber and Daniel were totally high. I mean, they, it was oh, so hilarious. Like, they were laying on the pillows, gazing into each other's eyes, picking the flowers. Um, just a note. Um, but anyway, the whole ceremony was very nice. Um, I didn't know, it didn't, I didn't realize that Michael was going to be walking Jana down the aisle, and it was kind of... Um, weird that he decided to, like, just as he was getting ready to walk her down the aisle, Michael looked at Jana and said, um, you know, it's no secret that I really haven't liked you in the past. And, I mean, he was he was approaching it from an I'm apologizing for not giving you a chance before, but um, it was kind of at an awkward time. It was I had to go back and, like, rewatch that scene because I, I, I didn't totally understand what was going on, but... I mean, I, you know, good for Michael. He <laughs> he was able to apologize. I just, I don't think she, I don't know, I think it was a weird thing to say right before she walked down the aisle. But um, thanks a whole lot, Michael. And and I really, uh, I quite enjoyed the wedding. Um, I, I think Michael in that, in that whole outfit he was wearing, like, I don't know, it was like a linen shirt. Like, <laughs> it was just hilarious. I love that Lauren just keeps trying to loosen him up. Michael just keeps winding himself up more and more. Lauren keeps loosening, um, loosening him up. Um, and I thought uh, I liked uh, the little scene between Jana and uh, Kevin behind, like with the curtain or the um, the uh, sheet between them, and kind of talking. And um, it was really sweet. You know, I, I did enjoy their wedding. Um, I hope you guys did too. Uh, meanwhile, in Mexico, <laughs> Victor is um, sitting in that bar having his tequila, and getting it poured, by the way, from the Desperado guy. Um, he was a knife thrower in that movie, so it was kind of cool. To, like, every time I see that the bartender guy, I'm like, it's the Desperado guy. Gotta remember to vlog about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I couldn't help but notice that that everybody in, in this Mexican bar is drinking Cuervo. Who goes to Mexico and drinks Cuervo? Like, that's, I mean, that's just, it's cheap. It's not even good, and I can't imagine that Victor would be drinking Cuervo, like, pour that man a bottle of, give him a bottle of Patron and send him on his way, he deserves it. Um, so yeah, and another kind of weird thing about the Mexico scene, like, that little girl is basically just a white kid with a dark wig on, and they're pretending that she's Mexican. Like, what? what's the point of that? They're in L.A. Why not shoot this in L.A.? You can't find a Mexican kid, an authentic Mexican kid? I mean... Clearly, it's like, I think the girl even has blue eyes, but I keep looking at her, and it's like, that's just a white kid with a wig. Um, anyway, I was just noticing that. But now I guess we know why Victor is there. He's looking for the guy who did the hit on Sabrina. So, um, not totally sure if he's gonna kill him, or what he's gonna do to him. Maybe, like, a couple of wah, wah, you know, <laughs> Victor with his punches, wah, 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 wah. Um, maybe that's what he's gonna do, I don't know. Um, but back at home, the, uh, turmoil continues. We have a board decision to place Victoria back at Newman, which I kind of knew was coming when she, um, when she quit Jabot, but, um, so they kind of did this little power move. I'm surprised Neil didn't want the position. I guess he just has his hands full. Um, and I kind of liked to see them one-up Adam, although I did think that Victoria was really rude in asking um, Adam to leave the ranch. Uh, I mean, both she and Nick and everyone is all about family. They're all so, you know, family is the most important thing to the Newmans. Well, Adam 
is Victor's son. And maybe you don't want him running the company. I can understand that move a little bit more than trying to get him kicked off of the ranch. That just seemed really inappropriate to me. Anyway, that is about my 10 minute mark. So this is the end of part one of the chat vlog. I still haven't talked about Kane and Chloe, and that needs to be said. So come back and join me. Look for part two. I'll see you then.